The third man in the cage. You know, the guy in the sneakers who's supposed to enforce the rules, but oftentimes just issues meaningless warnings until 15 minutes have passed by. Well, every so often they might find themselves unexpectedly cosplaying as one of the other people locked inside the fence. As we all know, the sport of mixed martial arts is wild, chaotic, unpredictable, and dangerous. It's officials, media, and fans sitting cage so I can get a feel for the action that includes the visceral sounds, sights, and occasional flying tooth or blood splatter. So we can't expect referees to always emerge unscathed from it all. Whether it was retaliation for actually enforcing the rules, concussed mistaken identity, or Gus Johnson's prophetic words coming to fruition, Sometimes these things happen in MMA. If you step in the cage, you're not safe. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and here are 10 times fighters went after referees. Number 10, Phil Baroni at UFC 45. This is going to be awkward. Yeah. Yep. Elephant in the room right out of the gate on this one. Baroni is at current awaiting trial for allegations of murder. Holy shit. Our entry takes place a lifetime before that absolutely insane news, though, at UFC 45. It was there that the New York badass met Evan Tanner, who was making his middleweight debut. Baroni had Tanner in danger early and opened up a bad cut that just as Phil was moving in to get the finish, referee Larry Landless decided needed examined. The nearly 90 second break gave Tanner just just the time he needed to recover from the opening barrage. A newly composed Tanner turned the tables, turned the tables in a wrong way with a takedown against the fence. Tanner then moved into mount dropping elbows on a gassed Baroni. As Landless neared the men prepared to halt the bout, he apparently heard Phil verbally submit. As Tanner got up to celebrate the win, his opponent took a swing at Landless while still on his back. Baroni was so upset he actually pushed his cut man Stitch Duran, who was never his friend, and had to be calmed down by Dana White. Fucking relax, Phil! Jesus wow. Christ! Because this was 2003, nothing came of this but a rematch that Baroni would also lose. Number 9, Gilbert Ivel at Fight Festival 12. Alright, now before this, Gilbert Ivel wasn't exactly known in the sport for his good behavior. By then, he already had two losses on his record via disqualification. One was for biting his opponent on the regional scene, the other for eye-gouging Don Fry in Pride. But it was this small show in Helsinki where Ivel would permanently cement his reputation as a hothead and poor sportsman. Seconds into his fight against Atay Backman, the referee separated them, but instead of resetting them in the center of the ring, insisted on them continuing close to the ropes. When the same sequence repeated itself, Ivel's protest quickly turned violent. He landed a sudden left hook to the referee, which immediately dropped him and left him open for a soccer kick on the floor. The incident not only secured another DQ loss, it followed him to the United States as Nevada refused to license him to fight Sergei Karatanov at Pride 33. It was only after CSAC officials were satisfied with the results of a personal meeting with Ivel that he was able to compete in the U.S. again, which opened him up to fight in Affliction and the UFC. An interview with Ivel in 2022 did shed some more light on the incident, though. The Dutch kickboxer claimed the referee was showing blatant favoritism because not only was he an official, he was the promoter of the event and his opponent's trainer, a conflict of interest that would make even Chatri blush. Number 8. Conor McGregor at Bellator 187 One thing we know for sure about Conor McGregor is that he's a very calm and reasonable person. <laughs> And one thing we know about standout referee Mark Goddard is that he doesn't take shit from anybody. Their two worlds would collide at Bellator 187 as Connor's SPG teammate Charlie Ward fought John Redmond. After a huge left hand floored Redmond as the first round was coming to a close, Goddard stepped in. Believing Ward just scored a KO victory, McGregor ran from his seat past officials and security and into the cage, jumping on his friend. As the two celebrated, Goddard prevented the then UFC lightweight champion from continuing the party. McGregor shrugged off other officials, followed the veteran referee to the other side of the cage and shoved him hard enough to impress Jason High. What followed was pandemonium with shouting, more officials attempting to restrain a man who should have been in his seat, and a freshly dazed Redmond getting crowded and bumped before he could even stand up. As he was being ushered out of the cage, Connor triumphantly motioned to the Irish crowd for some inappropriate applause. Just as things appeared to die down, he rushed the cage yet again to confront Goddard, but he was stopped at the door. The good thing is they're best friends now, just kidding, no they're not. Numbers 7. Renat Latifov at Crimea Rush Ain't no Carlos Saput made a statement with a 5-second knockout win over Renat Latifov at Crimea Rush in 2018. A strong win and his last victory to date. One that was immediately upstaged by the referee just moments after getting the win. Latifov woke up in a concussion-induced murder rage and clearly didn't know what had just happened, and mistook referee Armin Ananyan for his opponent after he intervened to stop the contest. Attempting to show off his wrestling skills he didn't have time to display in the actual fight, 
Renat fought hard to secure a double takedown on Ananyan, who by this point was pressed against the fence. But it didn't stop there. Instead of just getting double underhooks and stalling until additional personnel could come and help, the referee decided it would be a fine time to practice his standing guillotine choke. It only took a few seconds for his corner to enter the cage, but by then their fighter was already unconscious. To add insult to injury, Armin walked away with a classic 80s high school movie bully smile. Perhaps he was overcompensating for his own unimpressive MMA record. Number 6. Joe Neem at Knockout Promotions 54 To see a referee handle a similar situation in the exact opposite fashion, look no further than Knockout Promotions 54 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Just moments after local fighters Reese Brink and Joe Neem began their lightweight bout, Brink landed a front kick that set up a flurry of finishing strikes. Neem was slumped over lifeless when third man Brandon Gallo stepped in to make it official. As Neem regained some form of consciousness, he thought he was still in the fight and wrapped his arms around Gallo's legs. When Gallo sprawled to avoid the takedown, Neem maneuvered his way to the ref's back where he attempted to secure a rear naked choke. As Gallo attempted to roll out of the dangerous position, he couldn't quite shake the confused fighter off of him. Fortunately, his team quickly rendered aid and convinced Neem that if he completed the choke, it wouldn't be considered a sanctioned win. Neem let go and he immediately stood up and apologized. Like a professional, Gallo seemed to take it all in stride. Now that's what I call pure Michigan. Number 5. Vyacheslav Datsik at Fight Club Moscow With a prison stint for armed robbery, ties to white supremacist groups, and a habit of attacking sex workers, it's safe to say that Vyacheslav Datsik is one of the most despicable people in a sport full of them. Longtime fans of the channel might remember him for knocking out Andrei Arlovsky in his professional debut, or they might remember him for his absolutely batshit performances and blatant disregard for the rules. He has been disqualified for eye gouging, penalized for grabbing his opponent's nuts, and even thrown to the canvas by an official for trying to attack the same man after getting TKO'd. However, at a charity kickboxing event, he would actually assault a referee. Paired up with a smaller and much younger fighter at Fight Club Moscow, Datsik began showboating with every hit he received. After being fed up with Datsik pretending to be hurt, the ref stopped the fight, declaring him the loser. That's when Datsik decided to sucker punch him. However, the referee not only blocked the strike, but delivered his own after pushing aside the young victor, who had stepped in to defend the ref. Datsik responded by getting him into a body lock and running them both out of the ring, sparking an expanded melee in the crowd. Don't worry, folks, it's all for charity. Legend has it they are still fighting each other to this very day. Number 4. Willie Ott at Agrilin 19 While Roy Nelson infamously kicked Big John McCarthy in the ass to protest a perceived late stoppage in his win against Bigfoot Silva, at Agrilin 19, the losing fighter would be the one to show his anger. When Nihad Nasufovic took Willie Ott's back early in the second round, it didn't take long for the Austrian to tap. But if you tap and the referee doesn't see it, did you really submit? Referee Nabil Sabai must have been contemplating this deep level of philosophy as he completely missed the tap. Panicking, Ott responded to the non-action by pounding on the floor with his other hand. That must have snapped Sabai out of vacation from the fight, and he proceeded to stop it. Ott angrily stood up, shoved Sabai, threw a body head punch combo, and threw his mouthpiece at the ref for good measure as his cornerman rushed in to calm him down. Not saying he was right to give the referee a two-piece extra crispy, but I can understand this one a little bit, getting choked is terrifying. Number 3. Razi Jabari at URCC3 It's pretty messed up that in a tournament it's possible to lose twice in one night. If you drop the initial bout but make it back as an alternate, it can happen. Chris Curtis, he lost both of his fights at PFL 7. Might be the worst night in the modern era of the sport, but at URCC3, Razi Jabari certainly tried his best to get the same experience. In just over a minute into the first round against Hanario Bonario, Jabari would be stuck in full mount receiving a barrage of punches. After tapping the strikes, the clearly frustrated Iranian waited until the official announcement to confront the referee, Joey Lepitan. After pushing and punching Joey, Jabari would find himself on the wrong end of a mount yet again after the referee pushed him back and threw him on the floor. URCC's founder, Alvin Aguilar, rushed into the ring to simultaneously lend a hand and remind everyone that he's a BJJ black belt when he locked Jabari in a rear naked choke. Multiple officials separated the promoter from the offender and immediately escorted the twice-defeated man away. Jabari was slapped with a lifetime ban from competing in the Philippines and has been inactive since that night in 2011. Man, I love this carny-ass sport. Number 2. Andreas Camacho at Trench Wars 20 Let me just start this one off by saying that Trench Wars with a Z is the most MMA name for an event that's ever existed. Alright, so debuting flyweight fighters Andreas Camacho and Jesse Joe Mesa provided a memorable curtain jerker for the aforementioned Trench Wars 20. Mesa immediately swarmed Camacho, landing a variety of strikes. Problem was that variety veered into the illegal territory with a soccer kick to the head. That's when referee Frank Camacho, and no, 
they're not related, but how awesome would that have been? Halted the fight to address the foul. Still rocked from the kick, Andreas instantly jumped back to his feet and swarmed with shots in return, but they were directed at the ref. Being an active fighter who had competed at lightweight and welterweight, Frank was able to handle the onslaught without things escalating any further. He simply clinched the young fighter and explained what just happened. The fight was called a DQ, and Andreas was praised for showing heart under duress. The kind of heart under duress you can only expect to see at a Trench Wars show. Number 1. Takeo Shina at Garachan 5. Gotham City District Attorney Harvey Dent once said, You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Before inexplicably becoming one himself, in a pretty hasty third act turn looking back at it. I mean, we get it, you're sad about your face and your girlfriend, but one chat with Nurse Joker and you're holding kids hostage? Come on, Chris Nolan, I I'm not buying it. Anyway, it only took Takeo Shina 33 seconds to go through that entire hero-villain cycle. At Garachan 5, while waiting for the announcer to finish addressing the crowd, his opponent Yung Hyun Lee was face-to-face -face taunting him. Shina remained stoic, but unleashed everything he could as soon as the bell rang. Lee looked helpless as Shina dropped bombs on his chin until he fell to the canvas. As follow-up strikes continued to rain down, veteran referee Samio Kimura dove over Lee to end the fight and protect him. However, Shina wasn't done just yet and kept throwing punches. Kimura committed even further to saving Lee and absorbed a hammer fist to the head for his troubles. But Takeo's very intentional knee to the referee's side was the cherry on top. Kimura rolled away in pain while Shina was still on the offensive. Multiple cornermen and officials then rushed the cage, pulled Shina away, and rendered aid to the victims. Meanwhile, the newly minted villain would celebrate, not realizing he just added a DQ loss to his record. What a big dummy. An enormous thank you to Ant Walker for writing this list, Max Randall for a banger of an edit, and Ben Rosette for providing the soundtrack. Give these guys their flowers by following them on their socials, and then like and subscribe because I like flowers too. Who is the next name fighter to go off on a ref and why? Give us your predictions in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you when I see you.